Hi, this is Mrs. Ashworth, and I'm going to talk to you today about evaluating resources, or don't believe everything you read. You can find these slides at the bit link that I have listed here. When you research, it's your job to make sure you use quality resources. On the open web, one of the pitfalls is to find sources that aren't very high in quality. So using this test, also known as the CRAP test, will ensure that you get good sources. We're talking about currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose. And I'm going to go through each of these with some relevant examples for you. First of all, let's talk about currency. We need to know if the website was recently published, if it was recently updated, whether or not things have changed since the website was published. And also, you need to know if your topic is going to need current resources. Sometimes it won't. Here's a couple of examples where I can talk to you about currency. In the United Nations example, I can slide down the side and make note that the most recent press release is December 12, 2015. That's a good indicator that this site is being curated. If I go to ti.com, however, I see an old site. This site is probably from the early 2000s. An indicator is this bright blue background and the fact that we don't see uh, that kind of glossy look that websites have nowadays. We also don't see dates. Now let's talk about relevance. When we're talking about relevance, we're talking about whether or not the website is about your topic, whether or not the information is going to help you complete your assignment, but we're also talking about whether it's written for high school students or adults or whether it's written for other people. So I have a couple of examples that I'm going to show you here. On the ESA Kids website, we have the story of the universe. It's very short, good for kids. We also have these little animations over here on the side. Both of those things indicate that this website is not going to be relevant for high school research. However, if you go to the NASA Science website, you'll get the same topic covered in depth, written in language that indicates that it's for high school students and beyond. Next, we're talking about authority. When we're talking about authority, we want to who, know who the author is, what the author's qualifications are. You may not find an author, you may just find an organization, but you want to know who is responsible for the website and whether or not they're well known and respected. The first example that I have here is from the Enough is Enough Foundation. And something that you can do, and I'm just going to remind you over and over again, uh, is that when it comes down to it, you should always Google the foundation or the author to make sure that the author is, uh, is authoritative on the topic. I don't know about the Enough is Enough Foundation, but if I Googled it, I might be surprised to find that it's very authoritative. Here's a Huffington Post blog written by Jason Alderman, the Vice President of Knowledge Universe. The only way that I'm going to find out about Jason Alderman is if I Google him. Sometimes you'll be able to click on his name and that will take you to information about him. Um, but the best bet is for you to Google Jason Alderman. This may be good information, but I need to say something a little bit about blogs right here. Be careful because oftentimes blogs are opinion pieces and they may not be relevant um, or authoritative in your research. 
Now let's talk about accuracy. When we're talking about accuracy, we want to know if there's a good list of resources that we can access. We want to see that sources are given for images, and we want to know that the information fits with the other research. One example, the Human Cloning Foundation, is a bad website, and I'll show you why. If we scroll down here, we have this old copyright, and then we have this blurb about Professor Dr. Zavos, who is the guy that's behind this website. Ultimately, what this shows us is that this Human Cloning Foundation is kind of a brainchild of this Dr. Zavos guy. If I Google him, I'm not going to find a lot of good information on him. And what's more, if I read this information, if you read it, if you find this example and read it, you're going to see some stuff that looks pretty iffy. On the other hand, nature.com treats the same article in a much more scholarly form. So here we have a, a slide, we have this Google, I'm sorry, this human stem cells created by cloning. We have a citation for the slide. We have related stories associated with this article. And down at the bottom, we have a whole list of references. That's important to remember when you're trying to figure out whether or not your article is accurate or not. It's also really helpful when you're trying to find more research associated with your subject. Finally, we're going to talk about purpose. What is the main purpose of the website? Is it education? Are the claims made on the site supported by factual evidence? Is the website selling anything? Or is it a joke website? As a first example, we have the NIDA site on body image. We'd have to look up NIDA again, Google it, make sure that the foundation is, uh, is legitimate, authoritative. We'd probably need to compare this information to other research that we find from other sites. But this doesn't look like it's trying to sell us anything. It doesn't look like a joke website. as opposed to this one, where we see a book. The information might be pretty good, but this site is obviously trying to sell us this book. I may be able to find information about Kathy Cater elsewhere, and she may have a good site with good information, and I may be able to click on this and locate good resources. There's also a link up here for resources, but this site specifically, if you tried to cite this in your uh, research, that would not be good because its purpose is to sell you something. Finally, we have the Onion. If you're not familiar with the Onion, the Onion is a, it would be considered a joke website. It's not trying to sell you anything, but it's not serious. When you use the CRAAP test to effectively evaluate web sources, you're ensuring that your research is current, is relevant, is authoritative, is accurate, and is purposeful. If you're not sure about a resource, ask a librarian or a teacher. Here are some additional resources for you. The OWL site for documentation. And then I provide a list for, or a, a link for databases. And I'm going to talk about databases for a second here. Because a lot of you like to use websites for your current information. 
but databases also will provide you with current information and it's scholarly and vetted and you don't have to worry about going through the whole crap test just to figure out whether or not the links in the databases are going to be useful resources for you. Here are some links through the library, uh, the Lindbrook Library. We have the home page, here's the research site. If you want to ask a librarian, you can click this. We have our YouTube and uh, we also have our book reviews right here. But I'm going to click on the web, the research site and show you real quick. When I go to the Evaluating Sources tab, we have lots of information for you that will help you with this Evaluating Sources subject. Again, if you're in doubt, ask your teacher, ask me, and we'll help you as best we can. Um, thanks for watching.